The Washington. Washington. What y'all call it again? The Washington. Oh, that's right. You ain't got a name. They don't got a name. They all the Washington football team. And admittedly, hey, it's kind of worn on me. I don't mind the Washington football team, but I can't wait till y'all get a team name, a logo, a mascot. I, I, I can't wait for the day. But y'all had a very successful season last year. Y'all went what? Y'all won seven games, made the playoffs, and y'all played the Bucks, the future. Well, then future Super Bowl champions. Y'all played up particularly well. It was a very good year in Washington. And things you only expect to get better because now you got Ryan Fitz Magic himself out there slinging the ball. I'm a Dolphins fan. I saw Magic firsthand. But the question is, with the healthy Cowboys team, uh, a New York Giants team that's kind of a make or break year for J Daniel Jones, uh, Philadelphia Eagles team with now Jalen Hurts at quarterback, how will y'all fare? Well, that's what we're here to answer. What's crackalacking? It's your boy, Brushmo. Just in case you did not know, so we're going to do a deep dive in the roster, a little roster breakdown. I'm going to give you my starters for the 2021 NFL season. And then, of course, a prediction on how I think your team's going to fare. But go ahead, become a bro, and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Let's go ahead. Let's do the giggity gosh darn thing. We're going to be taking a look at... The roster first and foremost. First and foremost. Is that is that a saying? Who knows? I don't care. Uh, we're looking at the offense that is led by Scott Turner. He, he last year he was running that that spread offense, um, and it, it's yeah they took a lot they took a lot of snaps at shotgun. When you have Dwayne Haskins, uh, when you have Alex Smith at quarterback. You got a guy you don't really want to put under center, man. The wheels just ain't there given, you know, the injury and whatnot. But I don't know if they really if they really go away from that. I think this they will take a majority of snaps in the shotgun again with Ryan Tannehill. Let that man see the field. Let him make some calls. Ryan Tannehill finally gives them a little bit of consistency at the quarterback position. I'm very excited for Ryan Tannehill. And they bring... Some weapons. I think this team, they're going to take a lot more deep shots than they did last season. And I mainly say that because of the addition of a Deami Brown, who was a steal in the third round. He was probably one of the best vertical route runners coming into the draft class last year. And even Scott Turner himself, he kind of emphasized the importance of chunk plays, of basically stretching the field, with deep passes to really open up the screen game because the screen game was very important to them last season. They ran, what, 11% of their passing plays were screens. I mean, you could also say a lot of that was because of what they had going on at quarterback, but I think they could still, they, they'll probably still opt to do a little bit of that this year when you have such talented guys uh, such as Curtis Samuel, such as uh, Antonio Gibson, that are very good after the catch. So I really do expect them to kind of keep that, but I expect them to take a lot more deep shots. Terry McLaurin would love that as well. Antonio Gandy Golden, man, he's kind of been show he showed off in minicamp a little bit, and this guy is a big vertical threat in his own right. So I think they will utilize that a lot. I think we're gonna see a lot more uh, motion, a lot more jet sweep motion with this squad that's why they added curtis samuel guy that is just made to be that type of uh uh decoy in some some cases but hey this is a copycat league so the nfl teams they look at where other teams are succeeding they try to mimic that kyle shahan's kind of the hot name when it comes to offense uh just like sean McVay was uh, a couple of years ago, Kyle, Han Kyle Shanahan is that. So, yeah, a lot of teams are going to try to adopt uh, bringing in more motion with their offense. And it works with a guy like Curtis Samuel, with a guy like um, Antonio Gibson. I really think that they're going to try to use utilize that to keep defenses on their toes. But 
yeah, man. Like, like just talking about the receiving core, like Terry McLaurin. I really think Deami Brown, man, he's going to see a ton of time there. Uh, they have Kelvin Harmon listed as a star here. I really think Antonio Gandy Golden has a, a better shot than Harmon. Harmon is really just this possession guy. Not to say he won't make the roster, but I really, I, I think he's going to be further on the depth chart. Uh, I mean, they have Adam Humphreys, kind of one of the well, once was a premier slot player in the league. He's a quality slot player, though, at that. Cam Sims, Steven uh, Sims, Sims uh, duet there brings also a lot of speed. Um, they also got Dax Millen, man. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, that's interesting, man. He's a good possession guy as well that uh, can play uh, the outside or in the slot. So that's interesting. Shoot, Logan Thomas kind of came out, was a coming out party for him at tight end last season but they also bring in john bates heard a lot of good things about john bates like he's a solid receiving option but more so he's he's more of a complete tight end he's a very good blocker i hear he could be the tight end too um they brought in samus reyes former basketball player for chile um he he's just an athletic stud this is i mean another thing popular in the nfl is taking these just athletic freaks that may have not played football maybe played basketball in this case reyes that kind of where he came from uh and trying to like make them these tight ends in the league so a lot of interesting uh targets threats obviously the backfield and antonio gibson should see a bulk of the carries uh jd mckissick he's also another very good um pass catching back uh they have lamar miller which is kind of crazy i don't know if he makes a roster Peyton barber always feels like he's a uh, on the bubble but jared patterson should be a guy that does make the roster there i don't know how much time he will exactly see there but they have some playmakers man they have some playmakers more so i wanted to really talk about the offensive line because i bet you some people worried with morgan moses who's been a very quality right tackle there um there in washington for quite some time and they releasing him i bet you a lot uh, i bet you there was some concern there's some worry but this they have a lot of capable bodies on this offensive line they brought in charles leno jr who's been a solid if not at least average left tackle uh dana obviously going back to chicago you got cornelius cornelius lucas moving to the right tackle spot which where in 2019 he had that phenomenal season at right tackle coincidentally for the bears so him and uh leno kind of reunite so those are probably going to be your starters there but again they have capable bodies i mean they brought in uh drafted samuel cosme they have uh this is sadiq uh charles who they drafted the year prior that they're young promising competition uh, or competitors there for both of those tackle spots and i think charles is actually he they brought his name up as a potential um potentially in the left guard battle there with eric flowers who another former tackle who's found tremendous success at guard now come and return into the team uh and i mean we didn't even we haven't even talked about the probably two best offensive linemen in uh Rallier and um sheriff those guys are phenomenal but yeah like i'm filled with a lot of what's the word i'm looking for positivity optimism there we go optimism when it comes to this offense especially like i know ryan fitzpatrick at times you know he could be streaky but they do get a lot more con like consistent there on offense which was something i think really missing last year because this defense is stellar let's go ahead and talk about the d the d the d the d, the d uh there we go so talking about the defense obviously you got jack del rio he runs at base four three his philosophy at least when it comes to this squad pressure 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 dude he loves to get pressure and he's got probably one of the best probably the best defensive line in all of the league with chase young looks like this guy's gonna be a superstar he's gonna be a pro baller he's gonna be a stud montez sweat man kind of came out last year in in year two playing across from young and he looked a very good he looked he looked the part of the first round of a first rounder and then you got other guys on this roster like james smith williams a uh, stupid athletic uh edge edge rusher edge defender uh that they had they got out of uh what was it nc state the year before they also have 
um other rookies in Chaka Tony, uh, who's this undersized speed rusher, William uh, William Bradley Keen, who I was pretty high on going into the draft. Is he? He's just he's got a good first step, man. He's real twitchy. He uses his hands pretty well. So uh, they they got it. They got it in spades, and it, you could say that about the defensive line as well. The interior, Jonathan Allen is probably a top five, if not at least top ten. Uh, tackle in this league, defensive tackle, obviously. Deron Payne, he's he's a he's a suitable, he's a good starter. Uh, is he a first rounder? Uh, probably not worth the first round pick, but he's a good starter. Tim Settle, Matt uh, Ioannidis, Ioannidis, man, I'm always gonna butcher that name. Sorry, I'm just terrible with names, so that's on me. But those guys are very good, honestly. Matt I there. Can't believe I'm calling him Matt Eye. Uh, he could be a starter really anywhere on any other roster. So, yes, very good squad. Very good defensive line. This team's going to get pressure. Now, let's talk about where they really tried to make improvements was being the secondary. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Jack Del Rio and what he runs. Because this guy really runs a variety of coverages. Um, I always talk about how when you go from the college level to the NFL, like just just coverage concepts are way more complex it's it's like college on steroids and then some it just it's like going from algebra to like calculus it, it just gets all kinds of wild um and del rio probably has one of the deeper playbooks when it comes to um what he likes to run the variety of the different coverage uh concepts and i really think they're going to incorporate a lot more man uh which he didn't feel comfortable running last year because of the addition of william jackson the third like he's been a very good man corner during his time there in cincinnati they really i think made a mistake by not trying to bring him back but solid they also brought in uh through the draft benjamin st Jude, who's this big press man corner that i think can win uh, can can win a lot on the uh, outside. He never like he may not have a like great speed, but he was never getting beaten deep. Though in mini camp, Deami Brown got him a couple of times. But I mean, what do you expect, man? Deami Brown, like I said, he was one of the best vertical route runners. So yeah, that's to be expected. But uh, Benjamin St. Juice was a good pickup. Going to the safety position, Derek For uh, Derek Forrest. I was very high on. I had a what? I think I had an early day three grade, like a fourth round grade on. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. And I mean that second that safety position just feels stacked because this is probably like um, just real quick talking about the William Jackson pickup. Just because they're gonna play a lot more man doesn't mean they're gonna be a man heavy team. I think there's like this is Jack Del Rio. We're still going to see a lot of cover three. We're going to see a lot of um, quarters. I think we're going to see a lot of cover one because I really don't think they have a guy that can really freelance over the top. Um, or I don't really think they really only have one guy that can do that. And it is, it's it's going to be interesting to see w what this safety position brings because, like, Forrest, I don't know if Forrest is a guy that can do that. Jeremy Reeves, based on the uh, what he had, like, a little over 300 snaps last year, and he looked great. He's probably the only guy I really feel good about. Like, Troy uh, APKE, he's probably cut. I'm straight up honest, probably cut because they're probably going to keep Forrest. They're going to keep reeves they're gonna keep cameron curl best believe your sweet cheeks and then landon collins they can't part ways with just because of contract this is the thing with landon collins man his unwillingness to move to linebacker because i think he's at his best when he's in the box around the line of scrimmage i think really hurts this team because you have three good safeties there and then a promising rookie and like what are you gonna do cameron curl literally filled in for landon collins and looked great man he looked every bit the part so I think Jack Del Rio, I really trust him to be able to get Reeves, get Curl, get Collins all on the field at the same time, get them a respectable amount of snaps. But when it comes to like when they go to those cover like cover one looks, playing cover three, the guy to really guard the middle, I really rather have that be Jeremy Reeves because Landon Collins, he they tried that with him in 2019. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. He's not he's not a good deep safety. He's better around the box and it's 
curl that's kind of like his thing luckily they could uh, probably dump one of these guys in the slot every now and then speaking of the slot man i think they're gonna have one hell of a slot battle uh when it comes to the nickel corner like jimmy moreland they brought in bobby mccain who has all kinds of versatility like he could go back and play deep safety like he's got a ton of versatility to him and then an interesting name here is i think um daryl roberts who's kind of been a journeyman i think he he could also play into that nickel core uh that nickel back position um kendall fuller he's kind of like found a new life there on the outside really i honestly thought he'd probably just be a deep safety kind of like a jimmy ward but uh no they played on the outside last year and he actually did quite well i'd rather keep him away from the slot because he really struggled there in kc and they didn't even bother trying like moving him there um much in washington last season um looking at the rest like it's not like they got great corner depth they do have st jews um everett he's mainly been a safety um uh, if my recollection is correct but yeah the secondary honestly it looks pretty good it looks promising they got a lot of talent uh we just position group on this defense which isn't saying much this is a really good defense is linebacker but they have a ton of speed at linebacker i still think they're gonna opt to have a guy like john bostic uh bostic on the field a majority of the time just because jamin davis man dude he's long he's fast he's gonna see the field a ton but he i don't think they start on him early keep in mind he really was just the starter last season in kentucky so they might bring him a lot a bit slowly and rather have guys like bostic um cole holcomb uh or who, uh, who i like to call honeycomb honeycomb has been a really good coverage linebacker he's like he's probably honestly i would say the best linebacker on their roster right now but uh john bostic he's just a veteran guy he's been around the league for like eight nine seasons uh he's a guy that could come in and get people in the right positions that is valuable that is valuable even if he ends up being a liability on the field liability and coverage liability in the run game maybe if he's probably the worst player on the field for that defense at that time a guy that's able to get guys in the right position that's why i really wish landon collins would just move to linebacker because then you might get it you get an upgrade from bostic but that, that probably won't be the case i mean i know you got a david mayo on the roster too but he's a special teamer let's be honest um kaliki hudson former safety now linebacker he's not he's not gonna be playing in the middle so i think they bring Jamin davis along a bit slow they keep bostic probably he's probably gonna lead much like he did last year he's probably gonna lead uh the team in snaps at least from the linebacker position but this is a really really good roster man um i think there uh, there are questions with the offense but there's reason to be optimistic. Obviously, you want a franchise quarterback in the future. Tyler Heineke probably ain't it. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Allen probably ain't it. Steve Montez probably not making the roster. Because um, you got a good offensive line. I think you got a lot of good weapons. Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's a good bridge quarterback. But you don't really know what you're bridging to. But we're talking about 2021, so who cares about the future at this point? Let's go ahead and go into my um, starters. And I do starters based on... Not necessarily your base defense. It's based on who I think is going to be on the field the most, who's going to see the most amount of snaps. So, uh, at me, dog. Looking at the offense. Quick down. We got Ryan Fitzpatrick being a uh, star quarterback, obviously. Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin. Like I said, I really think uh, – uh, Deami Brown's going to be the other starter on the outside there. But you can make a good case, I think, for Antonio Gandy Golden. I think that's the probably the only other guy I think can win the starting spot on the outside. Curtis Samuel is going to be mainly the slot guy. Uh, Logan Thomas, then Charles Leno, Eric Flowers, Chase Rollier. Got Brandon, Sheriff, and Cornelius Lucas. So a pretty good-looking offense there. And then on defense, I got Chase Young, Montez Sweat. Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne as your star defensive line. Fantastic. I already kind of talked about why I think Bosick is going to be the, the big starter there on uh, the defense at linebacker. Then I got Honeycomb. Then William Jackson the third, Kendall Fuller. I got Jimmy Moreland 
for now, maybe Bobby McCain. I I still think they got they got to find a way to get Jeremy Reeves after how good he was last season down the stretch, uh, on the field more. So I got I got Collins just because they're paying him. Honestly, I I feel like he's just the odd man out at that point. Um, and then Cameron Curl. Regardless, I think they they find a way to get Jimmy uh, or Jeremy Reeves on the field. He really deserves it. So predictions you won seven games last year mind you you won seven games so i have y'all improving i got y'all going nine and eight you might be like what what nine and eight not even winning the division well you miss out by uh, one game spoiler for uh anyone following the nfc east in my predictions but I have them going three and three in the division like the nfc east doesn't matter how bad each team is like they play each other probably closer than any other division in my opinion um and on top of that again like i this team feels 500 again you, you, you improved upon last year by two wins you're nine and eight you're not seven and what nine um y'all you literally won the division last year in my opinion because Dak got hurt that doesn't take away from what y'all did. Y'all have a great defense. And I think there's a lot of promise with the offense, especially with Fitzpatrick back there. But there are some tough games on the schedule. Having to play uh, KC, Tampa. Then you also got, um, what, you got the Chargers there. You got Seahawks. So it's not all like the Packers if they have uh, AA Ron. So it's not all like gumdrops and cotton candy you know it, it the schedule is re, is reasonably tough i got y'all going having a winner record against losing teams and then i got y'all breaking even against winning teams so uh, again this i have this team improving i think honestly this team is on the way up uh there's a lot of promise to this squad so there's a lot to be optimistic about i don't know how washington team Washington's gonna fans are gonna feel about this, but uh it's just my opinion. <laughs> uh let me know what you think in the comment section below. Obviously, that's it for the video. Uh if I missed anything or got anything wrong, you fans will let me know about it. Come on, come educate me. I'm covering 32 teams, so hey, maybe I missed something. Maybe I misinterpreted something. I don't know. I'm only human, so i did i did my research I, I watched i watched my i watched my tape i drank my milk now i did my time let's just end the video here till next time you be easy my friends later